Hello all. The next topic is shortest remaining time first algorithm. So what is shortest remaining first? As I earlier said, shortest job first can be done in a preemptive way and non-preemptive way, and with respect to arrival time and without respect to arrival time. So if it is in a non-preemptive way, the name is SJF. Okay. If it is in a preemptive way, they will say the name is at shortest remaining time first. So SJF is non-preemptive way. SRTF is preemptive way. Shortest remaining time first. Okay. Here it will be a one condition with respect to arrival time because without respect to arrival time is it is normally a SJF. Okay. If there is no arrival time, then how we can preempt the process? There is no need to preempt the process. The preempt the process with respect to only the arrival time. Okay, so that's why shortest remaining time first with respect to arrival time. So here I am clearly saying short uh, shortest job first is a non preemptive that can be done with respect to with arrival time and without arrival time. Okay. But shortest remaining first, it is in a preemptive way. Preemptive way means definitely it, it will work under the arrival time. So how many categories in SG, uh, shortest job? Three categories. Shortest job first with respect to arrival time and shortest job first without respect to arrival time and shortest remaining time first with respect to the arrival time. So it is a preemptive algorithm. Shortest remaining time first with respect to arrival time. So these things you have already know. Turnaround time equal to completion time minus arrival time. Waiting time equal to turnaround time minus burst time. See here, there are four process: P1, P2, P3, and P4. Burst time of each and every process and arrival time of each and every process. Since it is a preemptive way. So, if any job is taken, it preempt the process and it will have a uh, condition to go to the other process also. Now, we'll discuss the gang chart. Listen the gang chart very carefully because gang chart is very very important for SRTF. So, at zeroth millisecond, the process P1 is arrives. Okay. So, P1 I have put here. Why I have put zero to one? Because first millisecond other process is also arriving. So we have to check whether the burst time of each process, then which one is shortest, that will execute. That's why it will work from zero to one. So which means one minute of work has been done. So the burst time is eight. One minute of work is done. So that's why it will become seven. Okay. And at the first millisecond process P two arrives. Now check the burst time of each process. The burst time of process P2 is 4. The burst time of process P1 is 7. So which one is shorter? P2. So the P2 starts executing. So the I will put P2 here. The next arrival time is second millisecond. So it will work up to 1 millisecond. So it will work up to 1 millisecond. Still 3 more millisecond job is left. At the arrival time of process P3. At the second millisecond, now check the burst time. The burst time of process P3 is 9. The burst time of process P2 is 3. And burst time of process P1 is 7. Which one is shortest? P2. The, that's why again I am putting P2 over here. So it will work up to 3 millisecond. Why? 3 millisecond other process is also waiting. Suppose if the process arrives at 4th millisecond. Then it will work up to 2 milliseconds. From 2 to 4 it will work. But here it will work up to 3 milliseconds. Because third millisecond P4 is also arrives. So again one more millisecond job gets over. See here from 0 to 1 P1 executed. From 1 to 2 P2 executed. From 2 to 3 again P2 gets executed. So 2 millisecond jobs are done. Still two more millisecond jobs is left out. Okay. So at the time of third millisecond, the again process P4 is arrived. Third millisecond P4 is arrived. Now again check the shortest job. P1, P2, P3, P4. Which one is shortest? P2. 
so the control will give again priority to p2 again p2 how long it will work check whether is there any process arrived no if all the process are arrived then the rest of the bus time gets completed see here at the third millisecond p2 work starts working since there are no other process arrival at the after third millisecond so it starts getting executed up to 2 millisecond from 3 to 2 totally 5 so p2 gets completed i hope you will understand this topic so at each arrival time you have to draw a gang chart that is very important in shortest remaining first many of them will get confused i'll once again repeat her from 0 to 0th millisecond only one process arrives so p1 so p1 starts executing 0 to 1 at first millisecond p2 gets arrived compare the burst time of both the process p2 gets shortest job that's why p2 gets started executing at the arrival time of 2 millisecond again p3 gets arrived then compare the burst time of each process and p2 again gets smaller p2 gets completed at the arrival time of 3rd millisecond p4 arrives now again check the shortest job p2 still will have the shortest job that's why p2 gets executed so after completion of 5th millisecond since there is no other process okay so the next priority will give it to the p4 why among p1 p3 and p4 p4 needs 5 millisecond p3 needs 9 millisecond and p1 needs 7 millisecond so which one is smaller p4 so the control will goes to p4 for so it will take 5 millisecond so 5 plus 5 it will come 10 the next priority is p1 so from 10 to 17 p1 gets executed and next to priority is p3 from 17 plus 9 which is equal to 26 p3 gets executed you may have one doubt sir suppose p1 and p2 both arrives at 0th millisecond p3 arrives at 1st millisecond p4 arrives at 2nd millisecond if it is a case if two process have a same arrival time then it will check which burst time is smaller if the burst time of p1 is smaller than p2 p1 gets executed if the burst time of p1 is larger than p2 then p2 gets executed so arrival time is used to entry point okay so based on the arrival time you have to draw a gang chart so this is very very important how to draw a gang chart in a shortest remaining time first now we'll calculate the completion time now i as i said earlier we have to move from the right end of the gang chart the completion of p1 is 17 okay a market here as 17 what about completion time of p2 see here p2 have a different slots but i have to move from the right end so p2 here is 5 that is very important okay and what about p3 p3 is 26 what about p4 p4 is 10 now we can straight away go to the turn around time turn around time equal to completion time minus arrival time so 17 minus 0 which becomes 17 and what about completion time of p2 5 the arrival time is 1 so it 4 milliseconds to complete the work and what about p3 so the completion time is 26 and what about the arrival time is 2 so which become 24 millisecond and then completion time of process p4 is 10 and arrival time is 3 so it need 7 milliseconds to complete the work what about waiting time waiting time equal to turn around time minus burst time turn around time is 17 minus burst time is 8 so which is equal to 9 millisecond and what about p2 p2 is the turn around time is 4 and burst time is also 4 which becomes 0 and the turn around time of process p3 is 24 the burst time of the process uh, p3 is 9 so which becomes 15 
and what about this p4 the turn around time is 7 and the burst time is 5 so it needs 2 milliseconds to complete the work and what about the average waiting time waiting time of each process divided by total number of process the total number of process is 4 waiting time of process p1 is 9 and p2 is 0 and p3 is 15 and p4 is 12 so which becomes 17 17 plus 9 which is equal to 26 26 divided by 4 so which will come around roughly 6.5 millisecond what about average turn around time turn around time of each process divided by total number of process so the total number of process is 4 turn around time of process p1 is 17 and p2 is 4 and p3 is 24 and p4 is 7 24 plus 7 31 so 31 plus 4 15 sorry 35 35 plus 17 which is equal to 52 so 52 divided by 4 which will comes around 13 millis again so this is the way you have to calculate the shortest remaining time first okay so shortest time shortest job can be done in two ways preemptive as well as non preemptive way if it is in a non preemptive way the name is sjf if it is in a preemptive way the name is srtf thank you